now available in paperback at e mirrors Isis, Dark Incubus. The goddess next door gets enthralled in a romantic entanglement with an evil incubus in this all-new Isis series adventure. Get your copy of Isis, Dark Incubus in paperback in e-readers today. One of my viewers wanted me to talk more elaborately about the subject of the sexual miseducation of men and women in the West. And this is a subject that I really wanted to go in depth on because so many people are sexually miseducated and this sexual miseducation prevents them from being able to have healthy relationships with the opposite gender. Now, I go in depth on the subject of the sexual miseducation of both men and women as related to men in my book, The Man Crisis, and in my book, the Wo as related to women in my book, The Woman Crisis. And the sexual miseducation of men and women basically is one of the reasons why we have things as related to animosity between the sexes, such as the gender war, and this war is one that many uh, in corporate America have used to basically drive a wedge between men and women and keep the, us from being able to have those healthy relationships that will allow us to draw closely and more intimately together. Now, the foundation for this sexual miseducation is fear, and it's a fear of teaching children about sex as, as they grow up. Now, this fear is that if children learn about sex, they will actively go out here and participate in sexual relations. Unfortunately, that fear is something that basically will is what leads to a lot, ironically, to children going out here and exploring sex without any sort of guidance and, and basically stimulates their curiosity so that people in corporate America can exploit them. Now... When it comes to this sexual miseducation, again, the foundation is fear, and that foundation of fear basically leads to people going out here and being ashamed of talking about sex to their children, and as they go out here and have that fear of talking about f sex to their children, what this does is it opens a door for people to create a taboo, and the taboo is what leads to the curiosity, and the curiosity is what people in corporate America go out here and use to capitalize on all of that curiosity that children wind up having. Now, sex was something that was created by the Most High God in the Bible, and the reason why you have so many people miseducated is because people don't understand the biblical foundations as related to sexual relations because many pastors out here are too afraid to preach a sermon talking about sexual relations as related to a godly standard and because the pastor is afraid to talk about sex as related to a godly standard most people don't know what god's standard is as related to sex and because most people don't know what God's standard is as related to sex due to the silence of the pastor, again, this adds fuel to the fire for those who are curious about sex and basically makes the taboo even more prestigious in their eyes. And as it's made more prestigious in their eyes, this is what makes people want to go out here and explore sex as related to their curiosities in a place I call the secret world. And as they enter the secret world, what they do is get taken off the road of learning about sex from a godly standard from people they can trust, like the pastor and their parents. And as they're taken off that road, what happens to a lot of people is they don't learn the foundations of sex from a biblical standard. Now, the foundations of sex as related to a biblical standard start out as related to learning men and women learning their roles as men and women uh, in God's natural order and that is the foundation of sex when you really think about it because again sex was made by God and it was made by God for men and women to come together in a marriage now Ringo who was a master teacher talks about how sex is marriage and yes it is marriage because a relationship is, as related to marriage isn't consummated until the two individuals have sex now in order for those two people to come together 
As a marriage, they first need to understand their roles as men and women in God's order. That is the foundation of sex, is that a man and woman first need to know their roles as men and women in order for them to come together in a relationship. Now, as it relates to God's standard, the man is established as the head and the leader of the relationship. And as the head and leader, excuse me, of the relationship, he is the one who's supposed to be, has the direct connection to the Most High God, and he is accountable to God as the steward at, over the earth, and he is accountable to God for his actions on earth, and as he is accountable to God for his actions on earth, he is not only, again, the head of the family, but he is the father of the family as things related to earthly standards, and he is directly accountable to the Father in heaven, who is his Father as related to his creation. Now, the woman on the other side is the helpmeet as supposed to help meet the needs of the man as they come together in that relationship that is formed as related to the marriage, and the woman is supposed to help the man meet the needs of doing the work that God has established for them to do on earth. And as the help meet, she is supposed to help meet his needs as related to him working to do those labors. And she is also to help meet those needs by going out and birthing the children that she has with the man inside of the marriage. And that is the biblical definition as related to sex Sexual relations are supposed to marry a man and a woman together, and the two of them, once they have sexual intercourse, are supposed to become one. They are supposed to be joined together as related to the sexual intercourse to become one flesh as related to each other, and as they become one flesh with each other, the man's spirit and DNA bond with that woman, and as they bond together, the two of them become one mentally, spiritually, and emotionally, and they do this so that they can go out here and bear fruit as related to children. Now, the Most High God gave the standard to men, telling them to be fruitful and multiply, and the way that they multiply is that the man and the woman come together and have sexual relations, and they have sexual relations inside of that marriage as a husband and a wife. And God reserved sex for the marriage and reserved it for the marriage, and he reserved it for a reason that I go into in depth in my book, Why 70% of Black Women Are Single. He reserved sex for marriage because what he wanted to do was be able to maintain a family under the authority of God inside of his order, and he also did this because he wanted to establish legitimate bloodlines for all of the children. And this is how we got the entire bloodline that goes all the way from Adam to Seth, all the way through numerous generations, all the way leading up to the birth of Jesus Christ. So people could go out and trace the entire bloodline of, of the Messiah all the way up to Adam, who was the first one who sinned, all the way to Jesus who came and redeemed mankind for sin, this is the standard established by the Most High God as related to sex and marriage, but most people never get that education as related to sex and the standards and rules and guidelines that God has established for sex because many pastors, again, out of fear of teaching people about sex and, fee and shame about talking about sex, they don't want to talk about giving people the real information as related to sexual education, and as a result of the pastor's silence, people become sexually miseducated by a group of opportunists who hope to make money at the expense of people, and as they look to make money at the expense of people, sadly they make men and women twofold children of hell. Now, these individuals who are a part of entities such as the government, 
big business and the entertainment industry, they hope to take advantage of people's lack of knowledge of a proper sexual education, and they hope to take advantage of people's lack of knowledge of a proper sexual education to willfully and intentionally miseducate people. And as they willfully and intentionally miseducate people, they hope to profit at the expense of people who are caught up in their curiosities as related to the taboo of sex, because that taboo basically makes it where their curiosity has them so caught up in their emotions as related to lust that they think that sex is something that they can use to be social currency to elevate themselves. And that's what a lot of opportunists have done over the generations due to the silence of people like pastors who are too caught up in shame about sex that they won't sit down and educate children about their bodies and how they function sexually and they won't go out here and teach people about the standard of sex being associated directly with marriage as related to the standard of God because these individuals go, won't go out here and talk about sex what happens is people wind up be, becoming really curious about their bodies, not understanding how they function, and because their parents are not w willing to talk to them about it due to the shame that the pastor and those impose on them, what happens is these people go out here looking for information about sex and wind up getting a whole lot of misinformation about sex from people who, who are a part of corporate America big business and the entertainment industry who want to take advantage of that curiosity and want to take advantage of that curiosity so that they can profit at that person's expense, not understanding how they're corrupting that person's morals, corrupting that person's values, and willfully and intentionally misleading that person with misinformation. And as they are misled with this misinformation, they pass this information down from generation to generation, leading to generations of individuals winding up being misled and misinformed about what sex is all about. And that's what's been happening for the last 60 years here in America. And I would even go and further on to say even centuries as related to people in general, they have been going on as related to this sexual miseducation, a sexual miseducation rooted in fear and further reinforced with shame. And as it's reinforced with that shame, this is what leads to people, again, believing that sex is some sort of big taboo that they become curious about. And that curiosity, as I stated before, leads to them entering into that place called the secret world. And the secret world is where these people get exploited by those people in places like Madison Avenue advertisers, Hollywood movie studios, and big business who hope to profit off taking advantage of that curiosity by misleading people. And this is how, thing, how sex winds up selling people on products that wind up further misinforming them, further misinforming them by making them believe that sex is some sort of thing that can elevate, one, elevate their social status, two, is something they can use as social currency to make themselves appear to be something that they're not, and three, something that they believe will allow them to create covert contracts that will further re make relationships better. Unfortunately, all of those things fall outside of the original standard that God established for sex because the original standard for God as related to mar sex was marriage. It was again about a man and a woman joining their bodies together and the two becoming one in love and those two becoming one in love and them sharing that love of God with their children. And as they shared that love of God with their children once they were born, they would then teach the gospel to the next generation of children. That is all a part of what sex originally was, but because the pastors would not preach because of their shame, what we got were people who were misinformed by opportunists in corporate America 
at Madison Avenue in Hollywood who wanted people to believe that sex was not about procreation and, and bearing spiritual fruit, but made them want to believe that sex was about them being able to get this social currency as related to being able to elevate their social status by saying, hey, I went out here and I had sex with this attractive woman, or hey, I had sex with this attractive man, so now I should be more popular because I have had sex with this person, when in actuality that, that you are not popular for having sex with someone. This is a point that I made in my other book, Stop Simping, Why Men Don't Need Finance to Get Romance. Many men go out here thinking if they have sex with an attractive woman, this will elevate their social status. And many women think that if they have sex with a hot guy, this will elevate their social status. But a lame is still a lame, even if they have sex with someone. And that's a hard lesson many men and women wind up learning after they wind up having sex with someone in a casual encounter. And it doesn't change anything. And this kind of frame of thinking comes from those who, again, are in the secret world and create covert contracts where they believe that if they go out here and explore sex in the secret world, a place where they feel safe about exploring their sexuality as related to their natural masculinity and natural sexuality, they believe if they explore it in the secret world, it will lead to benefits in the real world, but oftentimes these people wind up disappointed because the secret world is a rose-colored reality that distorts the picture of the real world and real life. And as it distorts the picture of the real world and real life, you don't see what things really are. And that's what leads to so many people wind up becoming disappointed as they come out into the real world and find out that sex really isn't this big, great thing that they thought would change their lives. Now, many others who explore sex in the secret world, they not only explore it there because they want to, again, be able to elevate their social status, others believe that if they go out there and explore this, this will define them as a man and a woman. Now, this is a principle that was created by Madison Avenue in Hollywood during the 1960s in the sexual revolution, and even before that, it was a rumor that came out they originally believed that if you had sex, this would be the thing that would make you a man or a woman. But sex outside of marriage does not make you a man or a woman. No, that is a lie created by the devil and Madison Avenue in Hollywood because you were already born male or female and God made you male or female. And having sex with someone will not define your manhood or your masculinity and it won't define your womanhood or your femininity. And that's one of the greatest lies that has been told to both boys and girls from, I say, three generations on. And as these girls have been, and boys have been told this, they think if they have a sexual relationship, what will happen is this will automatically be some sort of rite of passage to define their manhood or their womanhood. However, this doesn't define anything but puts a boy or a girl on the road to just participating in the sin known as fornication. And as they participate in this fornication, what happens to that boy and girl is that they wind up on a road where they cannot be able to have a healthy relationship with a, their future husband or their future wife. And the reason why they're not able to go out here and have a healthy relationship with their husband or their wife is because their spirit and is tied to another man or another woman and because when again a man and a woman lie together again the spirit of that man it, a part of it goes into that woman and the dna of him going to that woman and the spirit of the woman goes into the man and again if you're already connected to somebody else when you became one flesh and one spirit with that other person, then it becomes next to impossible for you to be able to bond with your husband when you decide to go and get married. And this is one of the reasons why so many Western men and women 
have very unfulfilling and unsatisfying relationships because part of themselves is tied to another person and because part of themselves is tied to another person they cannot go out here and fully bond with the person that they want to love and there's always some sort of space between them some sort of emotional and spiritual wall and that's all because they went out here having casual sexual encounters with different people when they were younger and when it became time for them to get married they're not able to have that fulfilling relationship not able to have a fulfilling relationship because they already had this sexual relationship with this other person so that's how a sexual miseducation can basically prevent a person from being able to get close to someone the way they, that God wants them to get close to someone in God's order because God wants men and women to come together and come together under him to serve him but they can't do that if they're bonded to other people especially if they are people who are not people who are looking to serve the Most High. And that's where people, again, their sexual miseducation leads to them becoming misled. And again, that sexual miseducation leads to them becoming misled and leads to them going to, from being with God to becoming spiritually lost. And that's what's happened over the last, um, I say, couple of centuries. People have become more and more spiritually lost due to the sexual miseducation they have received and as they've gotten this sexual miseducation again instead of them having fulfilling and healthy relationships with God-centered men and God-centered women they go out here and have sexual relations with sinners and those sexual relationships with sinners take them down a dark road where they wind up having their souls completely corrupted because as they participate in things like sexual promiscuity what they do is wind up losing more and more of themselves to each of these sexual partners and as they lose more and more of themselves as men and women what happens is all the spirits and DNA of these different people wind up pulling at the souls of, of the woman to the point where it tears her apart to the point where she becomes a hollow person and, or it becomes where the man gives away so much of himself that he winds up becoming completely empty. And all of this is basically due to the man and woman not getting that proper sexual education. And without that proper sexual education, what happens to many men and women in the West is that they go from being on a, on, on a road of just being told a lot of things about fear and shame to heading down a dark road of sexual darkness where they start to explore things like sexual deviancy. Now the road to sexual deviancy is one where people go out here and they start going to explore acts of deviant sex because they can no longer receive pleasure from being able to connect with someone in a sexual relationship and because they cannot find a way to connect with people in a sexual relationship this is where they pervert the relationship to start to explore deviant forms of behavior deviant forms of behavior such as sodomy such as BDSM such as all sorts of things and eventually what happens is instead of sex being something about love it becomes something about power and as it becomes something about power what it does is that the person starts to see their body as a weapon and as they see that as a body as a weapon they want to be able to break down someone and they want to break down someone because they want to get power over themselves sexually power that they basically gave away by entering the secret world going out here and looking to explore these taboos and looking to explore these taboos because they want to gain social currency in the secret world and with others because their whole definition of relationships is not about serving God no it's about serving mammon and it's all about elevating their social status with other men and women and not about having the relationship be intimate about God so this is where these individuals start looking to explore this sexual deviancy looking to get power as related to using sex as a weapon and this is where a person goes from looking to 
gain pleasure in an intimate relationship with his with their partner to looking to break down people as related to sexual acts and eventually they go from using their penis as a weapon to using their hands as a weapon and as they look to break down people what they look to ultimately do is have so much power that they can have the power of life and, and taking somebody's life and that's where the sexual deviant goes all the way from being a sexual deviant to graduating to becoming a serial killer so that's where the sexual miseducation can ultimately lead someone down that dark road of sexual deviancy, which is ultimately where the person wants to participate in sexual violence, taking the act of sex away from the biblical standard to the standard of the devil, because the devil's standard is to kill, steal, and destroy. And when the devil gets involved with the act of sex, it's all about killing the joy of men and women, stealing the love that they have, and destroying life. That's what the devil does as related to corrupting people on sex. And all of this can be avoided by people not being ashamed, not being ashamed about anything because if you go out here and have faith in God and train up a child the way they should go then that child will learn about what these things mean as related to sex and once they learn from their parents what and the and the, and the church what the standard of sex is all about then they won't be caught up in curiosity about taboos they won't be caught up in curiosity with these taboos to think that sex is something they need to explore as related to entering the secret world and being exposed to things like pornography that will basically further stimulate their lust because they have been taught to be ashamed of their bodies, ashamed of themselves, ashamed of how sex works. No, when there is a child who is taught a healthy sexual education they basically become indifferent to things like pornography because they understand that when their parents teach them about pornography and teach them no not something like oh it's degrading to women but it is fake images uh, that are designed to titillate and stimulate people and that these images are completely fake and they do not represent actual sexual relationships and they do not represent actual sexuality no, these are made-up images created by Madison Avenue in Hollywood to stimulate people's fantasies. And many of the acts that you think that are sex and pornography are fake. They are choreographed and acted out like pro wrestling. Once you give a child an actual sexual education, what this does, it makes it where the child, and when they grow into adulthood, understand that, that sex is, again, a something that was established by God established by God to be something that will allow them to come together with their help with their either their steward or their help me and come together in a marriage that serves God and God's order serves God and God's order by allowing the two of you to come together as one and share the joy of God Share that joy of God as you come together, and as you come together, spiritually, mentally, and emotionally, you can bear the fruit of children if God blesses you with children, and then you can participate in the ultimate gift of teaching those children about God's gift of salvation, teaching them about the sacrifice that Christ made on the cross for them, and come full circle in teaching the gospel to your children. Again, this is the ultimate spiritual sexual education, but sadly, many children don't get fulfilled as related to that education because many people live in fear of their children if they're going out to look to try out to have sex, if they go out and hear about sex. But if, again, if you have faith in God and you train up the child in the way they should go, in adolescence when they can understand some of these concepts they will not depart from it when they get older i mean this is what happens when you do get the proper sexual education yes there will be temptations like peers talking to your kids about and showing them pornography or adult videos but the whole thing is not to 
go out here and get start yelling at them, but to talk to them and get them to understand what these pe what these pieces of media are. Understand that these pieces of media are designed to manipulate your children so that they can go out here and, and shock them into getting caught up in their lust. Because again, what corporate America, Madison Avenue, and Hollywood want to do is sell you on sex, and they take advantage of the curiosity and the shame of Western people as related to sex to sell them their ideas of sex. And as they sell them on their ideas of sex, what they do is willfully and intentionally miseducate your children to believe that having sex outside of marriage is fine, miseducate your children into believing having multiple sexual partners is fine, miseducate your children into believing that going out here and basically exploring areas of sexual deviancy are fine, and sadly, as those children wind up getting miseducated, they wind up on the road to becoming a twofold child of hell, all because the parents and the people who know better, like the church, don't go out here and teach a proper sexual education. This is what happens when you don't teach the teach people what they need to know. No, when you are silent and don't say something, what this does is lead to the children winding up becoming sexually miseducated like the baby boomers were during the sexual revolution of the 1960s. A lot of those people who were baby boomers wound up in that sexual revolution because their parents were too ashamed to educate their children on sex because they had suppressed everything. And as they suppressed everything, they wa everything wound up exploding as related to sex and big business wound up making big money, taking advantage of people's curiosity and naivete, all because they didn't get the right information to let them know what sex was all about. And once you get a proper sex education, this stuff like women posing provocatively in ads doesn't phase you. Seeing sexually titillating pictures of topless women doesn't really phase you because you understand that this is not something sexy. It's only made sexy because you are curious about things that you didn't, you weren't taught about, and because you were curious about things that you don't get the education on sex on, you look at an ad of a topless woman and basically start to become titillated, but the whole thing is if you had an education, you'd be completely indifferent to that picture and it'd be just another picture of a topless woman or another picture of a nude person, and you would become indifferent to those pictures because it wouldn't be anything that you would want, you would care about, because you understand that a sexual relationship is between you and your wife, and it's an intimate relationship that is between you and your wife, and what makes your wife sexy to you is your love for her. That's what's sexy to you. And what makes her attractive to you is related to who she is on the inside. That is what you're going to see and believe. Now, I know men are visual and men are going to see attractive women and they're going to look at attractive women, but their heart will be with their woman because the two of them have become one under God. That's what happens when you have a proper sexual education. A proper sexual education allows you to share intimacy with your partner and have that intimate relationship with God. That's what a healthy relationship allows you to have. And again, so many Western people wind up in dissatisfying relationships due to a sexual miseducation. This is why we have so much divorce. This is why we have 70% of black women single and 70% of white women single looking f and not finding any love as related to relationships not finding any love because, again, Madison Avenue and Hollywood don't want you to find love because they want you to be a consumer. They want you to keep chasing their products. And if you are in love and satisfied, you're not going to buy as many products. But if you're miserable in their company, they know that they're going to get you to buy more products. So sexual miseducation is all about building their wealth base at your expense. So many people don't understand how 
a sexual miseducation can destroy your life. But this is something I learned way back um, when I started uh, as a teenager. I started to understand that a sexual miseducation can destroy your life because as I dealt with peer pressure from teenage boys who wanted me to have a girlfriend, I started to see how it was destroying people's lives, basically taking them on this quest to have sex to one, define their manhood as a man, and two, looking to get social currency from their peers. This is what put many boys in my teenage years in the 80s and the 90s on the road to becoming baby daddies and put many girls in my generation of Generation X on the road to becoming teenage baby mamas, basically destroying their lives, destroying their lives because they didn't get that edu sexual education from, as related to the standard of God. And because they didn't get that sexual education from the standard of God, they wound up getting involved with the wrong people. And as they got involved with the wrong people, they wound up getting that sexual miseducation from pornography, getting that sexual miseducation from dysfunctional peers. And those, all those people could have been way better off if they had gotten that sexual education from a pastor who could have taught them the standard as related to the word of God. Had those people gotten that sexual education from the standard of the word of God, they would have been able to live a more abundant life under Christ. And that's the sad part that I saw growing up as a teenager. And that's why I'm out here looking to again, look to do this requested video, a viewer wanted me to do, to preach this sermon that the pastor won't preach, because I, I care more about people than I care about money, and I, the pastor, he wants to get paid from the gullible women in his congregation, but I'm not thinking about looking to get paid, no, I want you to reap the rewards of an abundant life. I want you to reap the rewards of an abundant life where you can share a spiritual bond with your partner. I want you to share the rewards of being able to have joy in your life for being with a husband or a wife that will love you as, the, as Christ loves the church and as Christ loves us all. That's what I want you to have and that's why I want to give you a, the information for a healthy sexual education or the foundation for a healthy sexual education so that you can go out here and understand that this is not just about biology because sex isn't just about biology. There's a whole spiritual component to sex. And if you choose the wrong person to have sex with when you're young, you can wind up throwing your whole life out of order because again, many of those girls I grew up with in Generation X they became miserable baby mamas. Many of the men went on to become miserable baby daddies. And when they got older and they wanted to have relationships with other people, they couldn't bond with their wives. They couldn't come close to their wives. No, they couldn't do that because again, sex is a marriage of body and soul. And that's why you have to be very careful about who you're having sex with because having sex with the wrong person, as I stated in a previous video, can basically destroy your life and you have to really think about who you're having sex with because again the wrong person can basically mess up your life and that's why you have to be very careful about who you involve yourself with and not follow these man-made rules such as three dates leading up to a sexual relationship no the standard is if this man loves you, he will marry you. And it's not about how many dates he went on with you. It's not about a 90-day rule. No, it's about finding the person who wants to help you as related to being a man, as related to being out here and help meet your needs. And as a woman, it's looking for a man who is looking to lead and set a direction in doing God's work. So that's what sex is all about as related to, as I believe to be the standard of God. This is just me talking right now. And this is what the viewer wanted me to go more in depth on as related to the sexual miseducation of men and women. And I'm hoping you got an understanding of how the sexual miseducation can destroy your life because what I want to do is educate you on a proper sexual education so that you can live the abundant life that Christ wants us to all live. Now this was a video requested by a viewer and if you want to request a video you can send a donation of a minimum of $15 to the Cash App by clicking the link in the description box. 
And if you want to learn more about the sexual miseducation of men and women and how it has led to dysfunction between the sexes, you can pick up three of my books, The Man Crisis, The Woman Crisis, and Why 70% of Black Women Are Single. All three of these books will show you why a sexual miseducation can mess up a person's life. And you can also see how somebody can wind up on that road due to sexual miseducation in my novel, The Temptation of John Haynes. And again, all four of these books are available on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. They are also available at other online booksellers like Draft the Digital, Smashwords, the iBookstore, Google Play, Barnes & Noble, and even at big box retailers like Walmart and Target. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and e-readers, The Temptation of John Haynes. Give in to temptation and pick up this action-packed African-American paranormal romance. Get The Temptation of John Haynes in paperback and e-readers today. Now available in paperback and e-readers, A Steam Horror in the Hamptons. The aspiring angel tries to escape a house of horrors in this action-packed, all-new Esteem series adventure. Get your copy of Esteem, Horror in the Hamptons, in paperback and e-readers at online booksellers everywhere. Support Black-owned and Black-operated digital broadcast media. www.niceradionetwork.com Nice Radio Network, broadcasting 24 hours a day, 7 days a week.